for the KOMA challenge with Dan. We've ridden this before, I got dropped by Dan, but this time I'm coming back and I want more. Um, so here we go, and you'll see the lap time here is roughly right. Um, so the KOM at the moment was 6.30, this is Gores and Sprig Road. Um, so Dan goes straight on to get the whole Gores Road up a really steep part. I go to the right to get another KOM, uh, another KOM up Sprig Road. So you can see we're surging quite a lot. Dan doesn't have a power meter, unfortunately, so he seems to surge quite a lot at the beginning, and this was hurting quite a lot. Uh, I wasn't really looking at the power, but I can see now we were sort of hovering around 400, almost up to 500 at some point. Uh, so we're really flying along here. This climb is weird. It doesn't really look too steep, but it's about 7 See, it says here it's 4%, but the average ends up being 7% because there's some real steep ramps at the end. But it is quite bumpy and lumpy. It's not really, uh, not really flat or a steady climb at all, this beginning part. Um, but we had a good win today. Not, not the best win you could have, but pretty good. Uh, and it was really nice climb. Uh, this basically leads on to two gravel sections, as I was saying before. I take the right, where it's, it's a little bit technical. Um, there are a couple of times where you can't pedal or you have to slow down or you like you have to bunny hop something. But mainly, it's pretty good. And Dan just went straight on, um, and he went up a super steep four hundred meter wall. Of, I think it was about average fifteen percent, max twenty or something to twenty five. It was quite tough. Uh, so what am I thinking about here? I'm just thinking I hold the wheel and just pro I'll probably end up going past him at the end, but we'll see. Uh, so at the moment, I know that on the downhills, I've really got to keep the power on because Dan's a bit heavier than me, so he finds the downhills a bit faster. Um, but nonetheless, it's good. Uh, we took all the bottles and the saddlebag and everything off because um, you might as well, like, because we were coming up this way, we sort of looped round, so we were at the top of the, the climb, so I just put, put all my stuff there. I'd recommend that if you're really serious about the KOM. I mean, like, why carry around and probably an extra kilo and a half with the two bottles and everything and the saddlebag and the pump? And it just feels way nicer. Um, obviously, if you're just going for a normal ride and you happen to find a KOM um, that you want to do, then, yeah, do it. It doesn't make that much of a difference. It's more just the feel on the bike is way nicer. Um, that's that's my opinion of it. So you can change, see we just changed into the small ring um, and ready for the climb. It's just, it just on these climbs, you just got to make sure that you always keep the power the same. It's sort of hard when you're following someone's wheel, because um, it, it surges, tends to surge quite a lot. Um, especially when it's ramping, because people people often aren't that good at pacing, like, perfectly. Um, so if you're behind, the sort of accelerations end up magnifying quite a lot. So you can see here, we're down to like 200 watts or whatever. And this is when I knew it was time to go past. Um, so when it gets sort of ramped up with the seat part, I was like, right, time to go. Um, so you can see... We attacked a bit too much because we went to like 440, 450. I should have just held 370 by the side and sort of gradually gone past Dan um, instead of trying to attack him or anything because we're going for different segments, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can see uh, we sort of finished this in about three minutes and there's another three-minute climb, basically. Um, so obviously, if you want to get the KOM for each section, it's, it, it's relatively wise to, um, to go separately. I think I came third in both of those um, just because some people had done them separately. So obviously, you can go a bit harder. Um, so you can see the cadence is hit a little bit lower. I wouldn't say the cadence is the most important thing on these efforts because they're quite short and you're not really riding hard after them. So you can sort of use that, um, just sort of grind it out a little bit. Uh, it reached peak was like 17%, but it was nothing crazy. So Dan's going to go straight up that part and I'm turning to the right because uh, we both wanted to KOM, uh, which is pretty good. So you can see here now the power always drops down when it flattens off a little bit because you, I then normally I then like to spin the gear really hard but often you sort of lose power just at the beginning and then your body's like, right, we're back on this, let's go. Um, so I was trying to hold for this whole segment about 360, 370 watts. Um, I ended up doing about 350 or something, so it wasn't, it wasn't my best power. But I think, I think there were a couple of times where I didn't pedal or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm trying to shift into the big ring here um, and the power ended up going super far, low down. I couldn't really sort it out. Um, so I think I think on the gravel climbs, not always you can do your best power, but I, like when I was looking down, I kept on seeing 400, but I feel like I was looking down when I was putting the power down. And then when I was try, trying to dodge obstacles, obviously I was putting zero power down um, on less power, so then it wasn't solid. But you can see here, we're like doing solid watts near like three, over, over 360. Um, and again, 21 Ks an hour, up 7% gradient. So that's that's pretty good, pretty good speed, um, to be honest. Uh, I'd say on these like sort of five, six minute efforts, it's normally like, the first couple minutes aren't too bad, and then it sort of gets hard but sustainable. And the last like minute is just when you really got to dig in and just be quite, 
quite sort of like stubborn. You can see here there's some technical technical aspects sort of hopping around things, um, and that obviously isn't good for the power. Um, but everyone has that. So going for the KOM, it's like the power is obviously important, but um, often if it is a bit technical on the gravel climbs, it's better to sort of uh, surge at some parts and rest on the other ones. Obviously, if you're doing a power test, you just want to keep the power the same for the whole time. Um, but yeah, I was really enjoyable climb. Very nice gravel climbs. Uh, I think, like, to be honest, they are super easy. Well, not super easy, but that they are a lot easier to get the KOMs uh, on the gravel sections just because a lot less people do them. It's still relatively hard because, like, even if like eight hundred people do it, which people did on this one, it's still like there's still like the same 10, 20 people who are fast who do most climbs. So I think it's more like getting in the top 10 is normally easier on these on these ones just because there might only be five fast people instead of when it's like 3,000 people, there are 10 fast people. Um, but yeah, there's good, it's just different. It's good to practice going on off-road, on-road, um, and seeing how you can do the power, etc. I think my heart rate's a little bit low. It seems really weird because I'm like sometimes going along like, oh, this is quite hard, and my heart rate's like 130, which is like super low for me. Um, but anyway... Super, super good. It's annoying, I can't get the lap power on this, so you can see my power sort of going down quite a lot um, because we're not pedaling. And then down this part here, I'm sort of like not pedaling again that much. Um, so the power's definitely going down. I'm going up to like 50 k's an hour on the gravel, which is always a bit sketchy. Uh, and I think we are just coming to the end of the segment. So you can see, I did 6.15, uh, the KOM uh, was 6.30, and I did it 6.09, I think it was, because the it stops just at the top. Uh, so cheers for watching. I'll leave the power at the end and I'll see you in the next vid.